Hey guys, a little bit of a different uh, video here, um, but this is my spoiler-filled review of Rise of the Skywalker, and there is no way that I'm standing for this amount of time because I am still exhausted from the amount of exposition and story I got from the movie. But, least to say, if any of you have ever read these comics, the Dark Empire series, that's what this movie is. Essentially, really, part two. Because part two is almost play-by-play -play for this. Except you replace Luke and put in Kylo Ren, essentially. But have his intentions be a little different. But the whole cloning, Palpatine pushing his essence into different people, spaceships with the ability to blow up planets... Fucking Starkiller base was in this thing. Throughout this entire trilogy, I am amazed at how few people have brought up this series because this was lauded as some of the most ridiculous Star Wars storytelling throughout the entire Legends. Before Disney even had the thought of buying Star Wars, this was supposedly the story that happened after Return of the Jedi is where the idea of Luke goes bad because he wants to try and figure out how to properly use the force, uh, the dark side, because the Emperor was able to come back via clones. And actually, his return in this makes a hell of a lot more fucking sense than it did in Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker has about 17 different plot points because The Last Jedi does nothing to set up the film. Because it was just too clean cut. It ended the storyline with Snooki. It ended the storyline with Phasma. Oh, it turned Hux into an Igor. The only thing you had left was Kylo Ren fighting Rey again, which we had seen many a time. And the film essentially starts that off with like these sort of montage scenes with Kylo Ren going after a holocron. No, it's not a holocron. It's a finder thingy, but it's definitely a goddamn holocron. And the Resistance is trying to find a means to fight the First Order... Rey is training herself in the ways of the Jedi, apparently, from Leia and books, which I thought were destroyed. I don't know where she found this book. <laughs> For those people who say that Rey had a bunch of powers that were just impossible, you know what? I actually was just whatever with it this time because we've already established that her character is overpowered. We've already established that this woman has almost no flaws. Um, they actually tried their best to actually add some conflict with this character. Goddamn way too late. But I actually think this was some of the best inner conflict with this character because this character hasn't had any inner conflict. Maybe a little bit in The Last Jedi, but I never expected her to, to go anywhere near bad. When she had Force Lightning come out of her hands for that whole not dead chewy part, I was actually like, holy shit, like, this is so fucking rushed, but I'm actually not upset with where this is going. They go, they actually had the list of how many planets they went to, and I think I lost track after seven. Then there's always the concept that every time they switch back and forth, there's always a fade, right? There's not enough time to wipe the screen for every time they cut back and forth. There's so much going back and forth between all the different characters in this movie. This is the fastest paced Star Wars movie of them all because it's like it's on cocaine and it needs to wrap shit up so it's just beelining it to the end while trying to shove as much shit down your throat at the same time. The whole idea of Palpatine coming back is absolutely absurd. They even say it in the opening crawl. The characters are all like, yeah, Palpatine's back. Yo! Why did you even say that in the opening crawl if the characters then have to figure it out? You shouldn't have done that, but then again, really, the only two points in the opening crawl that actually matter is Palpatine's back and Kylo Ren is trying to find out how to beat him. That's it. I thought The Last Jedi's opening crawl was pointless, but this is even more pointless. So they're going after this holocron stupid thingy, which then leads them to a dagger, which apparently C-3PO can read, but he's not allowed to because of his restrictions. So they go to a planet that has Carrie Russell's bounty hunter thing, this tiny little Jamaican man, and they have to reset 3PO, which is completely just useless. This is super... Pervilous padding. However, it actually makes 3PO one of the best characters in this movie. And I never thought I would ever, ever say that. 
But 3PO has actually one of the best character arcs in this entire movie. And that whole line where he says, I'm just looking at my friends one last time, I thought that line was bullshit in the trailers. Technically speaking, it still is, but the movie works to actually make that line matter, which, again, completely out of nowhere. Also, so, so pointless because it just adds another 20 minutes onto the movie. After they reset it, ran a after they reset him and then they find out what the funky language is, Kylo Ren's ship is there and they go up there to find the cron, the holocron that Kylo Ren has. I actually, I can't remember why they go up there now. But I know that when they get up there, they get kidnapped, but then they get released and then they get kidnapped again and then they get released. All the while, Kylo and Rey are having that connection. And I actually think that this was really well done. I like that they took it to an even more physical space, like when she's on the weird sandy planet and Kylo is able to rip the necklace right off of her. And then they even have a fight while in Kylo's room, which I don't understand that though, because you they need to have visually shown this differently because I had the opinion that they were able to see where each other were. That was kind of what was set up in The Last Jedi, whereas Rey can see where Kylo is, but Kylo can't see that she is clearly in his room until they destroy the, his little shrine to Vader's melty face. I, I didn't understand that part, really, because that was kind of, I don't know, I, I always had the opinion that they knew where each other were, so that was a little bit of a taking me out but I still enjoyed these sequences because they got more and more intense throughout the movie they get off the ship Hux is revealed to be the <laughs> the spy which poor Dominic Mahonigan or Dominic Glee I can't actually remember Dominic something he went from being this super scary pumped up coked up Nazi in the Force Awakens, like his speech before they blast uh, all the planets with the Star Killer base, it, it was actually kind of intimidating. I was like, Jesus, mm, well, the Nazi vibes are quite strong here. <laughs> but then in Last Jedi, he becomes an Igor. He's a completely useless character with some of the worst humor. Uh, I still never gonna get over how horrible his humor was. Anyways, he gets blasted by the bad guy from Logan, who really should have been introduced in the Last Jedi if you wanted to replace Hox, because he is essentially the new Hux, and he's actually, he's not giving shit, I don't even remember his name, I just know that he's, he's trying his hardest to be a Tarkin, and, you know, give him credit, because there's no way he could pull it off with the amount of time that he had, but, anyways, kills Hux, they get off that planet, and then they go to, back to the, uh, oh, they go to the Endor, well, man, the Endor part is so forced in, Finn finds out that there's other stormtroopers who have rebelled, and, Finn, my boy, Jumbo Yeager, he went from literally being the most anticipated character for me. When I saw that it was a stormtrooper going rogue, I was like, yeah, some Kyle Katarn. You know, we're, he's not Kyle Katarn, but he's going to be the Kyle Katarn of this series. And you did nothing with him. You did absolutely nothing with him after The Force Awakens. The guy has literally the best arc the best story, aside from Rey, I guess, from The Force Awakens. And then you just wasted him. He, he did nothing in The Last Jedi, and then he does almost essentially nothing in this one. He has some sort of baiting line that J.J. puts in, his stupid mystery box writing. And I imagine there's probably a scene that he explains whatever it is that he had to say. Um, it must have been in there somewhere um, in the deleted scenes. But I imagine that they had to take it out because of what happens later with Kylo and Rey if it had anything to do with a romantic sort of idea. Thing, the, the knife apparently is actually a clue finder to finding something that's on the remnants of the Death Star. Which, why did someone make this? Why was this made? Why wasn't it, if it was something that was known was on the wreckage of the Death Star, why didn't someone just take it off? It's Instead of, I thought there was going to be some sort of like thousand year old Sith mystery or something, but it turns out it's just like, yeah, yeah, you remember Return of the Jedi? Someone forgot to clean up this part amongst all the corpses. So that part is, the whole, that whole element is just so wasted. And then they have a fight on it, which is, it first starts off cool, and then all of a sudden they start going really slowly at each other, which 
I was kind of sitting there with my roommate, so I was sort of with my friends and being like, what the hell is actually going on here? Are they just actually tired? <laughs> Anyways, Leia reaches out to Ben, Ray stabs Ben, and it's like, oh my god, he's dead. Man, Kylo is just a great character villain. Terrible execution a lot of times with him. This dude has been killed. Well, not near killed, but he's been defeated like smack down for the third time in this trilogy. He is a Team Rocket character. Anyways, Ray has found out how to do Force Heal, which again, I just, I was at the point where like, whatever, I'm given up on them actually trying to establish how she learns any of this shit. There's too much going on. There's no way they're going to actually properly explain any of this. There'll be a book, I imagine. Um, she heals him. She leaves. Ben's having a moment. And then Harrison Ford appears, which I did not expect at all. And I'm still kind of curious as to what he is actually. I don't know whether he's a ghost or he's in Ben's mind. Which, if this is the case, then why... Has he had, like, how did this conflict, it's such a shoehorned part in. It is a great part because it's a complete mirror of the last moment that they had before Kylo stabbed him. But the dialogue, even Harrison Ford's movements of holding his face is exactly the same. But it's just a change. It's kind of just showing that, you know, he has a chance to go over. It's the whole point of Kylo Ren's character has been struggling with trying to be the dark side, but the inner good in him, his lineage of of heroes within him has been conflicting with him the whole time. Like I remember someone pointing out when he stabs Ben, or sorry, when he stabs Han Solo, you see him kind of have this face of, yeah, I've done it. And then when he falls and he has this face of like, well, wait a minute, why am I still conflicted? I, I, I... Adam Driver did a fantastic job with this character, despite being roadblocked quite a bit anyways he gets this yeah i'm gonna be good thing the resistance go off to find the planet they, they go off to fight palpatine who by the way has apparently just made this massive fleet of star destroyers while he's had his time while he's been on vacation i don't know who's there to pilot them i don't know who's living on this completely inhospitable looking fucking planet it's got lightning coming down and all this weird stuff I don't know who's flying these ships. And then all of a sudden he's got a crowd of homies in this big auditorium, which they're not explained either. I don't know if they're clones of him because the Snookies were the, supposedly the clones. So I don't know. Anyways, they go there. They have this fight, um, which is a bit ridiculous because at first, oh yeah, the Kai, oh shit, the Knights of Ren wow what a completely wasted concept really cool introduction kind of ooh, mythos of them and force awakens completely forgotten about in the last jedi and then they are in this movie to try and look intimidating but by the third time they appear with the dur, dur, dur music around them and they don't do anything they had completely lost all flair to me and they are defeated like a bunch of chumps no connection with them at all. No establishment of who they are. They just... They're Phasmas. They're essentially Phasmas. But they don't even get any speaking lines. So, Knights of Ren. Totally wasted. Would have loved to have seen that actually done properly. So then they... <laughs> Palpatine finds out that uh, the two of them connected. Oh, yes! Another really r random part. Part that made me yell out, What the fuck? fuck in the theater was we find out that ray is palpatine's granddaughter which apparently had actually been predicted and it gives do it an unlimited power so many more dirty dirty jokes now there are so many jokes to make about this and i was just laughing that this whole concept, because all I could think about, I, the characters are supposed to be having this serious moment, and all I'm thinking about is Palpatine doing it and just saying, do it. <laughs> the whole time. It's just, it's so absurd. It's so absurd. They have this fight. He finds out that there's a connection between the two. He sucks out their force abilities somehow, and then the all the while there's this big like space battle happening above them. Again, 
completely copy, copying Return of the Jedi for the second time because they did it in uh, they kind of did it in The Last Jedi. He then force lightnings up into the sky and he disables all of the rebel ships. And that point I was I was done. I was like that is the most bullshit thing I've ever seen. This is jumping the shark. You know everyone I kind of like the, the fuel all of a sudden was introduced into Star Wars. This was more bullshit than that because he, he literally sent up an entire planet's worth, like several, several hurricanes worth of lightning into the sky and he didn't say unlimited power. Waste, wasted, wasted opportunity. Anyways, Adam Driver flies off. He's, he's almost killed for like the upteenth time and then Ray stands up and holds a lightsaber and he's, she's like kind of taking in the energy because all of a sudden Emperor is starting to shoot. The amount of lightning that can take out an entire fucking fleet is shooting it at Ray, and Ray's just like, yeah, this lightsaber can hold all of that, which you can't go from that to this with, no. Anyways, apparently all she has to do is hold up two lightsabers at the same time, and that destroys Palpatine like a Dragon Ball Z villain. And then Kylo... Say, uses the force healing thing to save Rey because she was rightly like, evis like electrocuted to death by this thing. They have the kiss, which I was kind of, when they were looking at each other, I was like, do it, do it. Because I'd been thinking that this was supposed to happen for such a long time now. And then that's what I'm saying. Like This scene right here is why Finn's line, this throwaway line of I mean to tell you something, I can guarantee you they shot Finn's part first and then throughout all of the endings, all of the reshooted endings that they had to do, this was one of the ones that they came up with. And this was like, well, we can't show the Finn scene now because we just showed this. We, we, Finn's shit is... We should have cut that out. <laughs> they should have cut it out. Um, and then when they get to... Uh, this, so then they have this kiss and then Kylo dies. He just... I was like, oh, when are you going to go back and forth between, like, who, you're going to force heal each other enough that we'll, you finally, you find a middle ground where you're, like, half alive, both of you? And then the movie ends with um, the Resistance winning and Rey burying the lightsabers in the desert on Tatooine, um, which I, I'm kind of curious as what they mean with this. Are they burying the Jedi? Because she then ignites a lightsaber that is it looked yellowish but i thought it looked kind of more whitish but it's like in the in between kind of like ahsoka in rebels where she's a neutral jedi sort of i think that's kind of the idea that they might have been thinking but i honestly have no idea because then it ends with how basically luke's journey started with ray looking at the sunset and that's rise of the skywalker there is so much like sorry for kind of going back and forth there but there's so much in this movie to just unload that it's it's an exhausting experience for people who are saying that they feel exhausted at the end i can totally understand whether they were emotionally invested in it or not is so much to fucking think about but in terms of how move how this movie is paced i'll give you a comparison i saw return of the jedi on thursday sorry rise of the skywalker on thursday and then I saw Fellowship of the Ring extended at the same theater the following day, on Friday. And that movie has an over an hour long more of film footage, of, of, of runtime. And that movie is more better, is far better paced than this movie is. Far, 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 far better paced. And it has an extra hour on it. This is just... I really hope, like, Disney... I, I'm really hoping that Disney l realizes the absolute catastrophe that they've done. They have burnt out so many people from Star Wars. Not only did they really piss off the fans of the Legends, books, comic books, all that stuff, then now they've pissed off a large portion of the film, the film-loving audience. Um, I know there's some people who are thinking this is, like, a fantastic movie, and, you know, you're fine to think that. It's, it, I just feel it's heavily flawed. It's a unfortunate end to this trilogy, and you all should have just had a plan. That's not hard. It's coming up with a plan, yeah, of course. That's coming up with the, the whole story. That would have been difficult, but having a plan is something that university students, college students, 
high school students, grade school students are told to have in a situation like this. So, yeah, y'all fucked up. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, um, uh, I'll put this up as soon as I can. And, uh, yeah, that's it. What do you guys think? Do you think that this series ends on a whimper or ends on a bang? I'm just exhausted. I don't want to touch Star Wars. I don't even want to watch The Mandalorian, even though it's coming to the end of its first season soon. I have no care to watch it. I'm that burnt out. Baby Yoda memes are not. I can't get into that show. And I have the ability to watch it. But I don't know. Anyways, that's all from me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, I'm going to bed.